Hi, this is uh, George Darakis again and today I would like to change a little bit the topic and uh, solve a problem uh, that uh, a lot of students find it uh, quite uh, challenging uh, This is from the web work of uh, McGill University here in uh, Montreal, uh, uh, Canada and this problem has to do with uh, symbol harmonic motion and that's from uh, the physics course uh, 101 which is uh, mainly uh, physics for uh, pre-med uh, students so what's the problem? the problem is that uh, uh, we have on a planet, uh, uh, people that they live in this planet, they use, uh, let's say this is the planet here, so they use a hole that passes through the center of the planet in order to send messages uh, to one another, so and that of course goes towards uh, all directions. But, you know, like for the purpose of the problem, let's just uh, choose, uh, you know, this direction here, which is the vertical direction. So, this is a hole that uh, the, uh, the people that they live in this planet, they send uh, messages. And, uh, uh, again, for the purpose of the problem, uh, this here, it's... Uh, frictionless so uh, what we know, we know the uh, radius of this planet, let's say R we know the density uh, of the planet as uh, mass per volume and uh, uh, what we want to find we want to find what is the speed of uh, uh, the message that drops uh, so what's the speed when uh, this uh, message is a distance uh, d equal with a r uh, from the center of the planet and of course this a here has to be less than one we can start here <clears throat> sorry uh, let's say that uh, you know we want to find what's the speed of the uh, message that drops you know somewhere here so at this distance here is uh, D and uh, you know of course this is the uh, radius here of the uh, planet how we will approach this uh, problem here uh, I mean uh, since we are talking about uh, uh, you know a mass which is uh, inside some uh, bigger mass uh, I mean, what's going on here? I mean, it's uh, uh, I mean the two masses they are uh, uh, they are attracted due to the gravitational force, and uh, I mean, assuming that this you know the mass of the planet is much bigger, that means that this here the force is acting mainly on. Uh, you know, on the object which uh, transfers the uh, message and uh, uh, I mean, what would be this force here? this force would be uh, equal with uh, uh, G times M uh, let's say of the object times M of the planet over uh, the distance which is d over the distance square 
and of course here we should put a minus uh, to show that always the uh, this force here it's towards the center of the uh, of the planet and uh, uh, actually it's opposite i mean we also have this minus here because the force is in the opposite direction of the displacement which will go from here to here uh, so that's the force uh, which uh, is exerted on uh, this object here and uh, I mean from Newton's second law this force here it should be equal with m uh, a where a is the acceleration that is acting on the object uh, what we know here we know of course that uh, uh, the density is equal with m over v uh, this here it should be mo okay which is uh, the mass of the uh, object so that means that uh, this and this they can cancel and now if we take the uh, equation of the density we know that density is equal with mass over volume uh, so that means that uh, uh, let's say we want to find the mass of the planet but actually here the part of the planet that is exerting the gravitational force into the object is only this part here let's is this part here so it's the part that uh, it's uh, uh, in this circle here we can call this mp uh, so uh, now uh, if we solve for mp we have that mp is equal with d times v and uh, uh, d times v of course this here is a sphere so the volume of a sphere is equal with 4 pi r so in this case the r it will be this distance here which we said is d so d square uh, just not to get confused uh, with this d here let's say we put this uh, x okay uh, so x to the third over three uh, okay so and now uh, if you go and you substitute uh, this mass uh, if you go and you substitute this mass uh, here uh, what we will have from these two equations what we will have we will have that uh, uh, g actually minus g times mp so we said that mp is equal with d times uh, uh, 4 pi x to the third over 3 and of course don't forget this d here i mean let's just not to get confused i mean this this here is this distance uh, so let's call it x square uh, so over x square so that has to be equal with a and now you see that this cancels with this with the third so what we have we have that a or uh, d x square over d t square is equal with minus g uh, d 4 pi x over 3 so once we reach this point uh, we have proved that the object which is uh, transferring the messages from the one uh, uh, person to the other that they live in this planet so we have proved that this uh, object theory is doing a simple harmonic motion I mean because we have that the acceleration 
is equal with some constant times the uh, displacement. So that's the uh, equation that proves that the object uh, is making a simple harmonic motion. And uh, if you compare this equation with, of course, the equation uh, dx squared over dt squared is equal with uh, minus omega squared x, uh, that means that the omega for this uh, simple harmonic motion, omega squared, it will be equal with this here. So that means that omega square is equal with g d 4 pi over 3. So that means that omega is equal with the square root of uh, g d 4 pi over 3. And of course, the omega is the uh, angular velocity. And uh, what angular velocity is this here? I mean, because we prove that uh, the object here is doing a simple harmonic motion, that means that uh, uh, th that means that this omega here, if you remember from the definition of the uh, simple harmonic motion. That means that this omega here corresponds to uh, an object that is moving uh, in the surface of the uh, uh, in the surface of the planet, uh, doing a, uh, a circular motion with constant uh, angular velocity, which is equal with omega. So this omega should correspond to the angular uh, velocity of the object uh, that is uh, moving around the planet uh, with the constant uh, angular velocity. Uh, so now, uh, let's erase. So let's do again the uh, planet here to show you uh, something so I mean let's redo this diagram here so we have that uh, uh, this is the center of the planet and let's say here is the uh, you know the message and let's say that this distance here is x uh, so we said that uh, uh, the uh, omega, uh, the omega that we find, uh, uh, is equal to the angular velocity of an object moving around the planet. So let's say that uh, it starts, you know, the object which is moving around starts from this point here with an angular velocity omega. So that means that, uh, uh, let's say, at some point, the object is in this position, and uh, uh, that means that this distance here, uh, this distance here, let's call it, uh, uh, let's call this, uh, we we'll call this x. Let's call this distance here y. So if you see from this small triangle here, uh, this angle here, it's equal with omega t, because uh, let's say omega t is equal with theta, because of course this uh, object is moving with a constant uh, with a constant angular uh, speed. So that means that. Uh, theta, the angle should be equal with omega t, you know, what is the time that it takes for the object uh, to come here, and of course we assume that t is equal with zero in this point. Uh, so that means that uh, if you take now this uh, uh, small triangle here, you have that y, and of course this here is r, 
you have that y is equal with uh, uh, r uh, cos omega t. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, now, of course, if you take the first derivative of this here uh, with respect to time, that will give you that uh, dy over dt it's equal with uh, uh, let's write it here dy over dt is equal with uh, r times the derivative of the cos is negative sine so we'll put the negative here uh, sine omega t and because you know you have to use the chain rule that means that you have another omega here so that means that dy over dt is equal with minus r omega sine omega t and uh, uh, what we have to calculate we have to calculate uh, exactly this here which is the uh, actually this here is the velocity uh, we have to calculate the speed so that means that doesn't matter in which direction is the object going I mean if it doesn't matter if it's going down or up uh, because we are actually interested only in the speed which is uh, just the magnitude of the velocity uh, so that means that we can ignore this minus here and uh, here of course uh, you have r you have uh, omega uh, I mean omega we said here it's equal with Omega is equal with uh, uh, gd4 uh, pi over 3 uh, so we have r, we have omega uh, now the only thing is missing to calculate the, uh, this uh, answer here is the uh, sine omega t but uh, uh, we can find that uh, from the basic uh, trigonometric identity that uh, sine of an angle, in this case the sine of omega t square plus cos of omega t uh, square is equal with 1 so uh, from this here uh, we can calculate how much is sine omega t because uh, uh, the cos omega t uh, we can calculate it from uh, 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 this equation here, if you substitute whatever y equal with x, which we know, uh, I mean the x is again the d, okay? So that means that uh, d over uh, d over r should be equal with uh, a, which if you compare it with this equation here, should be the cos omega t. Uh, so that means that you know cos omega t from this equation here you can find how much is the sine omega t uh, so that means that you can uh, find this here which again we said is the uh, velocity of the object uh, you know when it's in this position here it doesn't matter if it goes up if it's going up or it's going down uh, because we are only interested in the magnitude which is the speed uh, so that's the answer to this uh, problem uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, view this video and I hope you find it useful and uh, bye for now.